Hi guys, let's discuss gender independence, current affairs, politics, economics, all of all kinds. Here's the first question, and uh, I remember from uh, the previous session that uh, we we will discuss in this session something on CRR, something about CRR and SNR. You know, um, this is a question that had appeared in the previous session, so I just brought that here, and um, you know the answer is already there. We will not repeat what we discussed then, but we are going to discuss CRR and SNR. Okay, so what's CRR? Please write the definition: cash reserve ratio. We will take a simple, non-technical kind of understand, you know, definition. Then we will discuss it. We will look at why CRR is an important quantitative monetary tool. In simple bhasha, why it's a very important tool to control money supply in the market. Okay, so let's write cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio. The definition is all commercial banks, all commercial banks must keep, must keep a certain percentage, a certain percentage of their total time and demand, total time and demand liabilities, liabilities in brackets deposits with the RBI, with the RBI. Let me repeat, all commercial banks must keep a certain percentage of their total time and demand liabilities, in brackets we wrote deposits, with the RBI, full stop. The current CRR is, the current CRR is 3.5%. Three point five percent, comma, which will increase to, which will be raised to four percent, which will be raised to four percent on twenty second May two thousand twenty one, hmm? two thousand twenty one this year. So it's going to go up. Now let me tell you as to what is the definition. Well, let's dissect the definition. Okay. And uh, you see this uh, time, demand, liabilities, which we also call deposits. So what, what do the, all these things mean? See, when you go to a bank, when you go to a bank, you put money into a bank. Let's say you, you have some cash, you want to deposit in your account. Okay. You want to deposit in your account. And um, you know, you go to the bank and fill in the required details in the form and put that across the counter. The guy puts it into your account. Now, when you deposit, it's an asset to you, it is your money, so it's an asset to you. For the bank, it's a liability. Liability is a simple basha loan in banking language, loan something that has to be repaid, something that has to be returned. So your deposit has to be returned to you by the bank. Your asset becomes a liability for the bank. So deposits are traditionally called liabilities, you know, by banks. Okay. Now you have two major kinds of liabilities or two major kinds of deposits. You can use any term, deposits, liabilities, accounts, all mean one and the same. You have two major kinds of deposits. Time deposits, demand deposits. What is a time deposit? This is a deposit into which when you put money, you can withdraw it only after a fixed period of time. A deposit from which you can withdraw, you know, I'm talking of an account. A time deposit is an account from which you can withdraw only after a specific period of time. So it has a term. This is a term. That's why time accounts are also called term accounts. They are also called term accounts. 
A very good example of that term accounts would be fixed deposit and then of course we also have recurring deposits. It is your money. The banker will repay you but only after a fixed period of time which is to a large extent decided in advance at the time of opening an FD or an RD. Now that is a time account or a term account. What is a demand account? A demand account is one into which when you deposit money yeah, the banker has to repay only when you demand it. In simple bhasha, you can withdraw your money on demand. That is, a banker has to repay your money on demand. When you demand my money be repaid to me, they have to repay you. So, there are two major kinds of deposit, you know, demand accounts. One would be savings account. The other is current account. Other there is current account. Now, when you put money into a savings account, you can withdraw it on demand. That is the reason why current accounts and savings accounts traditionally have ATM cards. Fixed deposits and rec recurring deposits normally don't have, you know, uh, what we say, uh, ATM cards issued. But in, in the case of savings account and current account, there are demand account, there are what we say um, ATM cards. What is the difference between a savings account and a current account? Technically, a savings account can be opened only in the name of individuals. You can open a savings account in your name. I can open a savings account in my name. But Current accounts can be opened only in the name of a business entity. That is, you own a firm, let's say XYZ Trading Company. A current account can be opened only in the name of XYZ Trading Company. But it cannot be opened in the name of, let's say, in a personal name. So, current accounts are associated with business entities, savings accounts with individuals. The major difference between a time account and a demand account is simple. No, theoretically, no rate of interest is paid on demand accounts, whereas a fixed rate of interest is paid on time accounts. But this is theoretical because in practice, a small percentage of interest is paid on savings account. This is to this is done to encourage savings. I mean, why do you keep money at home? Why did you put money in the bank? You will learn something, you know, money will earn money. Money will add money to your, you know, your, your assets, basically. So that's the idea. To encourage the habit of savings, um, can, you know, banks give you a small percentage of interest. Currently, it is between 2.9 and 3.5%. Um, that's very low, actually. But then, still, it's better than keeping money at home, you know, which could be unsafe and at the same time doesn't turn anything. Now, this is all basic stuff that if there are two types of accounts, you know, depending on what you do, you could withdraw your money and all that stuff. The definition of CRR says that when you deposit money, when, you know, uh, you know uh, it says that a certain percentage of this money has to be kept by a bank with the RPI. So all commercial banks have to keep some percentage of this money they collect in the form of deposits from the public with the RPI. Currently it is 3.5%. Let's say you are a bank, you are all banks and the Reserve Bank of India. I have told you, you have to keep 3.5% of whatever deposits you have collected, demand deposits, time deposits of all kinds. Whatever you collected from the public, keep 3.5% of that with me. Means I will have that 3.5%, you can't have access to that. Let's say you have, you have collected 100 crores in deposits from public. You have a 100 crore deposit base, 3.5% is a CR, it means 3.5 crores will be with me. You cannot use this money, that's what it means. Now to take it further, what would happen? If CRR is increased or decrease, if CRR is increased or decrease, let me take you there and first before that, let me clear this. So currently it is 3.5 percent. Yeah, let's say tomorrow the RBI is going to raise it to 4 percent. 
this is increase okay the rbi says no uh, you know uh, let's say let's call you sangeeta bank okay sangeeta bank you now you will have to keep 4% of your deposits with the rbi so you have to keep more money with the rbi more money with the rbi means less money with yourself when you have less money with yourself the supply of money in the market decreases ms is money supply money supply decreases remember this is not for just one bank all the banks so money supply decreases when money supply decreases what happens to the interest rates you know that common sensically interest rates will increase to repeat a rise in crr from 3 and 1/2 to 4% would mean that banks have to keep more cash with the rbi more cash with the rbi means less money is available with the banks when less money is available and you know there is demand for money money there is always demand for money i mean money is the demand for money is always there in the market business persons need it people need it to buy assets like homes people cars and all that people need you know that people need money to buy consumer durables like washing machines air conditioners and all that stuff these days even phones so the demand for money is always there but the supply of money has gone down so what would happen interest rate increases when interest rate increases it puts additional burden on the consumer yes that's why only those who can afford to pay that interest borrow money now that's all technical let's take the opposite side if the crr is decreased from 3 and 1/2 percent sorry from 3 and 1/2 percent to let's say um 3 and 1/2 percent to um 3 percent so what would happen what would happen is something very simple you have to keep less money with the rbi you don't have to keep less money with me the rbi so what will i do is i will release money into your hands 3 and 1/2 percent earlier now 3 percent so i will release 0.5 percent of the money this equals about 50000 crore rupees at the very least okay so money supply increases money supply with you increase what do you do with money you try to lend because money sitting idle in the bank doesn't earn anything it has to pay depositors and meet administrative costs and everything else staff costs and all so what the what the bank does is it tries to lend and as money supply increases with all banks what will what is the best way to attract the, the consumer you know lower the interest burden so interest rates decrease to attract the customer banks decrease interest rates okay so to repeat a decrease in crr from 3 and 1/2 to let's say this is just an example 3 and 1/2 to 3% would mean money supply increases more money with the banks mean money supply increases when money supply increases interest rates decrease now this is all again on paper most more importantly why does the rbi do this the rbi does this with one major for with 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 an eye on one major thing that is inflation what is that inflation is rise in prices so how does you know when does inflation come and i'll integrate this with what will happen when interest rates go up see when you know money supply increases when crr goes down money supply increases so people borrow money people have a lot of money they try to spend money and all that they when they have money what happens is that their demand for goods and services increases when money supply increases people's incomes also yeah people's incomes also increase people's incomes increase when people's incomes increase their purchasing power also increases when purchasing power increases their demand for goods and services increases but when demand is not matched by supply prices increase this is inflation let me repeat a rise in money supply this is a consequence of decreasing crr a rise in money supply means incomes go up when the money supply increases incomes increase purchasing power also increases um when we have more money you can buy more stuff so your demand for goods and services also increase in the short term supply doesn't match demand so what would happen to the price prices increase this ladies and gentlemen is inflation i will give you a definition separately okay now when inflation happens the most important consequence of inflation is that the purchasing power of money the purchasing value of money okay of money decreases it always decreases 
your money buys less when prices increase. So this impacts everyone, especially the poor, the vulnerable, people who live in the margins of the society. Now let me tell you, Dick, why did the RBI increase CRR? Because it was worried about inflation. Currently inflation is 5.52%. I just checked it yesterday, 5.52% for the week ended on Friday, last Friday. 5.25%. This is below the threshold of 6%. RBI in its monetary policy has said that up to March 2026, next five years, the maximum inflation that could go up is, it could go up to 6%. It will go up to 6%, but remember, it is 5.5% is already pretty close to 6%. So RBI was very worried. What it did was this. It increased CRR. It increased CRR, decreased money supply, interest rates increase. When interest rates increase, your, you know, you, you have money. What would you do with money? You save that money. You go into the bank and put money because your interest rates on savings accounts also increase. Your fixed deposit earns more money. So why, why would you do this? Because now you believe that if I don't spend, and I put money in the bank, I will earn money. My money will earn money. So you postpone expenditure. You wanted to buy this phone, so you don't buy this phone. You wanted to buy that car, you don't buy that car. Because there are two reasons. One, one interest rates on, you know, on, on savings increase, okay? On deposits increase, but at the same time, when we borrow money, interest rates on borrowings also increase. Loans become expensive. When loans become expensive, you know, if they put additional burden on us to pay more interest, that means that they eat into our, our quality of life. So more money goes into payment or toward payment of loan and less money is available with us. So what we try to do is we try to cut down on expenses. And to cut down on expenses mean to cut down on loans. You understand that? When you don't borrow, what will happen? The demand for goods and services decreases. When the demand decreases, what will happen to the prices? Prices will also decrease. Inflation comes down. This is how it works. A rise in interest rates, both deposits and loans, makes loans expensive. When loans become expensive, when loans become expensive, people postpone their expenditure. People postpone their purchases. When, you know, the purchasing of what car, any kind of asset, any kind of consumer durable or whatever. So what they do is they postpone. When the postponement happens, the demand also decreases. When the demand decreases, you know, prices also decreases. That is why RBI does this. Okay. In March 2020, from 4%, CRR was brought down to 3%. March 2020, one year back. Why? Coronavirus came about, lockdown happened, you know, to spur the economy. The government said, let's cut down on CRR, release money into the market. Look at this. What happens when a CRR was brought down, let's say from 4% to 3%, in this case 3 to percent this example here, okay, the CRR decreased, money supply increased, interest rates decreased, people were asked to borrow spend this is how economy would spur in the short term in the long term you know but then there is a problem here you know um, the economy is slowly recovering slowly recovering and now that there is a second wave things are pretty bad very bad see inflation is okay i have never been never understood this obsession with inflation inflation is still okay because um, you see, if I have money, if I have a job and I have money, I would be willing to pay a little more, you know, to buy some stuff. But if I don't have a job and I don't have income, because I don't have a job, I don't have an income, and inflation is high, what will happen to me? You know, I will have misery. That is one, I don't have a job, I don't have an income. Second, I have to pay more inflation. So this is double misery. It's called double misery index. Okay. So the index goes up now. If loans become cheaper, consumers, if you're a business person, you would borrow money. You would borrow money, invest in a manufacturing facility or some set up, you know, ex try to expand your business. To do that, you would employ people. When you employ people, you put money into their hands. When you put money into their hands, their purchasing power increases. When their purchasing power increases, the demand for goods, goods and services also 
increases. When the demand for goods and services increase, you know, uh, producers will try to, you know, match the demand. Thereby increasing to, to by increasing supply. To increase supply, they would need to borrow because all businesses work on borrowings. Okay, they would invest money. To invest money, they would need money. They borrow and all that, so, and to 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 meet the raised demand. So what would happen is that they would invest in increased production capacities and all that stuff. So more employment comes in, and employment comes in. You know uh, what is hap what happens is that there is income. When there is income, there is demand for goods and services. So it's a wish. It's a virtuous cycle. It's a good cycle. It's a good cycle. But when loans become expensive, consumers, uh, business persons think that well, let's not borrow because if we borrow, you know, we have to repay more, and if to, you know, the, you know, uh, we'll earn something, but we'll have our out interest outgo will also be higher. So let's not borrow, let's not expand business, let's be a little calm, we'll, we'll try to borrow when the interest rates go down, okay? So when interest rates go, you know, that they'll have to wait. But when they postpone their investments, they, the employment generation suffers. When employment generation suffers, incomes also suffer. And when incomes suffer, you know, it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. So, um, you know, I believe that inflation is still okay. Inflation is still okay. and. Um, you know, um, up to 6% is still okay because producers will have an incentive. Producers will have an incentive to produce. They will have an incentive to produce to, because they earn more. They earn more. So inflation to a large extent is okay. A moderate level of inflation is important for a developing country like ours. And um, this is about CRR, cash reserve ratio. A decrease or increase in money supply would impact interest rates, which will impact savings and expenditures, which is borrowing, expenditure is borrowing and all that stuff. Okay. So, um, I think uh, that is fine. And um, should we look at SLR? Cherry, we'll just finish the SLR also. Right. Statutory liquidity ratio. Statutory liquidity ratio so you always try to write like this you know and when you write like this you may not remember you know you may not be able to remember much but when you try to write you'll be able to relate some of the stuff that we have you know we discussed with what you find on the screen statutory liquidity ratio statutory liquidity ratio what is this? Please write. All commercial banks, all commercial banks must keep, must keep a certain percentage, a certain percentage of their OF of their, a certain percentage of their total time and demand deposits total time and demand deposits of the total time and demand deposits with with total time and deposits with sorry not with i'm so sorry in the form of i'm sorry in the form of in the form of highly liquid assets highly liquid assets liquid assets like gold and government bonds government bonds gold and government bonds full stop to repeat all commercial banks must keep a certain percentage of their total time and demand liabilities in highly liquid assets like golden government bonds. Full stop. The primary aim behind this, the primary aim behind maintaining SLR, the primary aim behind maintaining SLR is, 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 to avoid is to avoid a run on the bank, run on the 
bank are you will run on the bank in brackets panic withdrawals panic withdrawals panic withdrawals panic withdrawals full stop see the government says the rbi tells banks that look 300% crr you have to keep with us but sometimes there could be a problem with your asset base with your depositors they lose confidence in you to repay their deposits they will come and make panic withdrawals large number of people would come and demand money give us back give us our money back give us money or our money back because they lose confidence in the bank's ability to repay them later so but at the same time the bank won't have that kind of cash because see when the bank collects money from the public from as in the form of deposits it lends that money you know it uses its money in different ways for example it has to pay for salaries it has to pay say, you know pay make payments for salaries uh, pensions of their you know, former employees at the same time you know it 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 has this obligation towards administrative costs rents air conditioners electricity bills and all that stuff you understand that plus they have to pay um they have to pay interest on deposits collected so there is a lot of cost what the you know what the bank does is out of 100 every 100 rupees the maximum it lends is about 40 rupees it does not even lend 40 rupees you know it rarely lends 40 rupees it usually lends about 35 rupees the rest is all used for other purposes you know 3% goes towards 3.5% crr what is slr you could write the current slr is 18% current slr is 18% 18% Full stop. So, eighteen percent the bank has to keep in the form of gold and garnet bonds because these are highly liquid. If there is a demand from a large number of depositors, give our money back, give our money back, then this these gold bonds, gold uh, you know instruments and uh, garnet bonds can be readily converted into you know money and the depositors be paid back. So earlier this used to be the case. Now these incidences have come down. So this is technically called run on the bank when people, large number of people run over the bank and say, no, 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 give our money back. So primarily to help a bank avoid that kind of institution where it can, you know, sell some bonds, government bonds, gold and everything, readily get cash and pay off the depositors. That's the idea. Okay. So that was pretty exhaustive. I think we spent a considerable amount of time on this. Sushil Chandra has recently been appointed uh, the Chief Election Commissioner of India. Sushil Chandra, former IAS officer, IRS officer, Indian Avenue Service officer, Chief Election Commissioner of India. See, usually the Chief, the Election Commissioner. Of, sorry, guys. Um, the election. What is happening? The Election Commissioner of India. Uh, usually, Election Commission of India has. One CEC, one CEC plus two election commissioners. Okay, two election commissioners. But this time around, you know, after the retirement of Sunil Arora, the former chief election commissioner, you know, one of the two election commissioners, Sushil. Ch oh, sorry, my friends, this is a different question. Sushil Chandra, you know, has become the CEC, and the other election commissioner is Rajiv Kumar. Rajiv Kumar. So. Currently, um, EC1, Election Commission 1, EC2 is vacant, is vacant. This is Chief Election Commissioner of India, Election Commissioner 1 is Rajiv Kumar and Election Commission 2, Election Commissioner 2 is, the office is vacant, the government is yet to make an appointment. So you can say that the next CEC will be Rajiv Kumar, essentially that's how it works. The Chairman of Union Public Service Commission. Pradeep Kumar Joshi. Pradeep Kumar Joshi. Chairman of UPSC Pradeep Kumar Joshi. Hmm. Chief Information Commissioner of India. Chief Information Commissioner of India. Um, you please write this. Yesho Vardhan. Um, 
कुमार सिंह यशोवर्धन कुमार सिंह यशोवर्धन कुमार सिंह सो नेक्स्ट यशोवर्धन कुमार सिंह नेक्स्ट वी हैव चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया करंटली शरद अरविंद बोबडे एज ऑफ नाउ वेन आई एम डिस्कसिंग दिस क्ला डिस्कसिंग दिस इट इज शरद अरविंद बोबडे शरद अरविंद बोबडे शरद अरविंद बोबडे द नेक्स्ट चीफ इलेक्शन चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया वुड बी नूतल पार्टी नूतल पार्टी वेंकट रमण वेंकट रमण नूतल पार्टी वेंकट रमण ने सो यशवर्धन कुमार सिन्हा शरद अरविंद बोबडे चीफ इंफॉर्मेशन कमिश्नर यशवर्ध यशोवर्धन और यशवर्धन कुमार सिन्हा प्रदीप कुमार ओके आई थिंक इफ यू लुक एट आई थिंक इट इज थ्री एंड फाइव हैव कम ट्वाइस आई थिंक यस इट इज यू कुड से चीफ ओके वाइट वी डू वन थिंग चीफ विजिलेंस कमिश्नर चलिए लिखते नया कुछ चीफ विजिलेंस कमिश्नर चीफ विजिलेंस कमिश्नर इंडिया इज संजय कोठारी संजय कोठारी ओके संजय कोठारी सो Which of the following won the best uh, film award in the 2021 uh, BAFTA Awards? BAFTA, British Film, British Academy Film Awards called BAFTA Awards. BAFTA Awards. Okay. The best film, Nomadland. So we will take this list. Please write this. Uh, write this. Best film. Nomad land, nomad land, N O M A D L A D. Nomad means someone who's a gypsy, Banjara, doesn't have a, you know, settled life, moves around between places. Nomad land. Next, best director, best director, best director. Chloe Zhao. for nomad land this is the film chloe that's how you pronounce it chloe chloe jhao for nomad land okay next best actor best actor the super duper anthony hopkins anthony hopkins for this film the father the father anthony hopkins for the father next best actress best actress this is an amazing actress frances mcdormand brilliant brilliant actor frances mcdormand for nomad land she plays the main role frances mcdormand her husband dies and um, then she thinks of not living a settled life so she takes her van you know, the essential stuff in the van goes around frances mcdormand you should watch this film of hers called fargo you should watch this film terrific film fargo you can watch with your family no harm actually there is another movie um three cuttings outside missouri you know there is one some movie like that what it's, it's a beautiful movie i know that i watched it so there are some movies you should watch hmm? 
please watch this lady's movies old but gold yeah then um, maybe we could also take um, supporting actors do we need i don't know if we would uh, be asked we could be asking the questions these could question these kinds of questions come all the time in the exams so why don't you write best supporting actor best supporting actor best supporting actor daniel kaluwa i think i got the spelling incorrect yeah it should be this is the first time i'm writing his name so i'm i should honestly i while i watch a lot of films and i remember a lot of good things uh, movies wise otherwise i don't remember anything yeah um this is um, yeah kaluwa kaluwa yes daniel kaluwa for this movie judas and the black messiah black messiah yeah messiah is someone who would come yeah messenger saver daniel kaluwa next best supporting actress best supporting actress yoon you uh jang i remember this because of the name jang yoon you jang for this film called minari minari hmm minari next um leave one line space okay two more best animated film very good film best animated film soul soul next last film last one best short film best short film best short film the present the title of the film is the present the present okay yeah. who backed the bafta leading actor award for his brilliant performance as a man living with alzheimers it's a disease where people tend to forget and all that stuff so um in the film the father we mentioned this anthony hopkins this adarsh garo you see the choice one adarsh garo he you know he started this film uh, white tiger you know it's a netflix film watch it the white tiger and um, you know um, he was shortlisted he was nominated for this award but uh, unfortunately he didn't win so his performance has been ranked among the world's best this year please know that among the best in the world you know very top kind of thing um white tiger is a novel written by you know arvind adiga arvind adiga he won the booker prize for that natan's nuclear facility was recently hit by a terrorist attack in which thousands of machines used to refine nuclear material were destroyed this facility is in iran this is natanj iran's two major facility nuclear facilities are fordo and natanj these are the two most important ones maybe in the next class i will open my remarks with the um a talk on iran theek hai like this time i discussed um, crr slr and all that next class i discuss iran every year i give a talk on iran for 3 4 hours so i'll cut it out i'll cut it down to about 10 minutes and tell you about why what's iran's what the iranian issue in the next class okay guys but in the meanwhile i'll tell you a few things who did this israel did that that attack but israel didn't confirm that we did it but anyway i'm going to tell you a lot in the next session um iranian okay the capital is tehran iran the capital is tehran and the president is hassan 
Ruhani Hasan Ruhani Hasan Ruhani Hmm Tehran then Hasan Ruhani Okay Would you need to know the currency? It's Riyal which you can also call Toman Yeah, Toman uh, I'm just looking at what else uh, should we Okay, let's discuss Iraq, it's neighbor, western neighbor Iraq's capital as you know is Baghdad something that all of us know Baghdad Okay, its prime minister is Mustafa Al Qadimi. Uh, I spend my considerable amount of time on learning about these countries, what's happening, their histories, and everything. So it's fun, you know. Uh, the currency is uh, dinar, Iraqi dinar, Iraqi dinar. Jordan. Jordan is a country here. Iraq, this is Syria. Okay. Yeah, next down there is Jordan. This is Saudi Arabia, Kuwait. Hmm. This is Turkey. This is Afghanistan. This is Turkmenistan. Pakistan. Okay. Maybe some other countries. Yeah, Jordan would be here, right here, just on this this part basically. Um, Jordan's capital is Amman. Its king is Abdullah II. Lot of things, lot of problems happening here in this country now. Abdullah II. Hmm? Okay. The currency is dinar. Jordanian dinar. Dinar. North Korea. Oh, I think you must be tired of learning about North Korea, isn't it? North Korea's capital is. Uh, Pyongyang its ruler is Kim Jong Un Kim Jong Un the currency is North Korean won North Korean won Israel um, capital 2 1 is globally accepted as you know, Tel Aviv is accepted as capital but Israel claims Jerusalem as the capital. Israel says Jerusalem is our capital. Okay, and its uh, prime minister is Benjamin Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. The currency is New Shekel. New shekel. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. The longest serving royal concert partner, spouse, in British history and Queen Elizabeth II's birthday, husband, sorry, Queen Elizabeth II's husband, Prince Philip has died, aged 99. He held the title of the Duke of Edinburgh. Duke of Edinburgh. Now, you can say Edinburgh also, no harm, huh? but typically Edinburgh. Um, this is when they were young, of course, and this is uh, a few months back. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to tell you, they married in 1947. What? Yes, the year India became independent and they have been married for 73 years. Okay. This is Queen Elizabeth II. She became the queen in 1952. This ladies makes her the oldest living monarch in the world. Living, uh, oldest serving monarch in the world. Oldest serving monarch in the world. Also oldest serving head of state. Her successor is her son, Prince Charles II. Prince Charles. Prince Charles. That man himself is, I think, in his uh, 70s, if I'm not wrong. She's 94. She's 94. This was 99. And they got married in 1947. Been married for what? Some 73 years now? Yeah. 
and Prince Charles would be the next line. Oh, he has been in line for ever since he was born. Okay, that would be 60 plus years. Who has won the ICC International Cricket Council Player of the Month Award in March 2021? Bhuvanesh Kumar for his, um, you know, for his performance against England. Against England. Now um, there is this uh, counterpart. I'm not going to go into the details, stat details, and everything. Okay, statistics and all that. Um, uh, when it comes to see, this is given to the men's best player and the male best player, female best player. So you could write female best player, female best player. For March, Lizel Liz. No, Lizel Lee. I'm so sorry. Lee, she's from RSA, which is the Republic of South Africa. The Republic of South Africa. <sighs> okay, hardly anything to discuss. Which of the following statements about the 6th edition of the Raisina Dialogue True. It was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Yes. Flagship, India's flagship conference on geopolitics and geoeconomics. Yes. Jointly organized by the Ministry of External Affairs and the Observer Research Foundation, ORF. Yes. This year's theme is viral words. You know, keeping in mind the pandemic and everything, they have this particular, what we say, um, you know, uh, theme also. Outbreaks, outliers and out of control. The Danish President Matty Fredriksen and the Rwandan President Paul Kagame were the chief guests for the inaugural session. Yes, all of them are right. Yeah. Now I want to you to know that Reisina is the name comes from this started in 2016. 2016. Reisina dialogue started in 2016. And ladies and gentlemen, Reisina is the name of the hill. Resina Hill is where the Rashtrapati Bhavan, the Rashtrapati Bhavan and Government of India's main office is located. Government of India, North Block, South Block, it's all here. It's a seat of the Government of India. Government of India. Government of India seat, it's called. Okay. Hmm. From which of the following European banks did the National Cooperative Development Council uh, Corporation secure a 600 crore pipeline for onward lending to cooperatives in India? Deutsche Bank. How do you say that? Deutsche. We normally say Deutsche. Doi. Okay. Deutsche. Say that. Deutsche. Some people call it Deutsche, but it's okay. It's Deutsche. That's the right pronunciation. Deutsche Bank. Deutsche means German. It simply means Germany. Okay. So this I'll just give you the names of the CEOs. This is one of the world's biggest banks, my friends. Huge bank. It's a huge bank. I think if I'm not wrong, it's headquartered in Frankfurt. Deutsche Bank is headquartered in Frankfurt. And the CEO is a guy called Christian Suing. Christian Suing. Hmm. Next, look at choice one Banco Santander, one of the top 20 banks in the world. In fact, it's ranked, I think, the 37th largest in the world. 37th largest public corporation among all public limited companies, 37th biggest in the world. Banco Santander is a Spanish bank. Its CEO, you write, is Jose Antonio Alvarez. Simply write Jose Alvarez. It's pronounced with an H. Jose Alvarez. Jose Alvarez. Next, Barclays Bank, top 10 in the world. Jess Staley. Jess Staley. London headquarters. <clears throat> okay. BNP Paribas. 
This is a French bank, one of the top 20 in the world, BNP Paribas. You could write this. Um, yeah, John Lauren Bonfefe. Yeah, Bonfefe. No, I think it's I'm a little confused about the name. Bonafe. Because see, uh, why I'm confusing, uh, confused is this Bonafe. There is only one F in this Bonafe. John Lauren Bonafe. Next, last one, Society General. This is a French bank again, as the name says, Society General. Okay. See, they write uh, SA. PLC is public limited company. We write public limited company. Um, in Deutsche, you know, in Germany, they write AG, which is Actical Chef. SA is Society Sociedad Anomina. Don't write. You don't need that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, Society General is Frederick Audier. This is the CEO, Frederick Audier. Frederick Audio. So then I guess the next question. Which Indian company backed a 300 megawatt solar power project in Saudi Arabia recently? Saudi Arabia is slowly moving away to from uh, petroleum reserves, fossil fuel reserves to using solar energy. And it's a desert country. They get plenty of solar stuff and all that. So that's something they are looking at. Uh, LNT. 300 megawatt solar power project they got this okay lnt's ceo is um, s n subramanian s n subramanian okay yeah okay. see this name comes from two danic danish engineers danish means denmark guys henning Hawk, Larsen, and Soren Tubro. Two friends started this company. Henning Hawk Larsen and Soren Tubro. It's India's largest engineering company. Okay. You know about Adani, Tata's, and all that. Well, let, let me tell you about GMR. GMR um, is um, a major infrastructure company. It owns a lot of this, you know, it, it owns airports. The Hyderabad airport is named uh, is owned by them. The Delhi airport has been modernized. Uh, in you know, it's a public-private partnership between the government of India and the GMR group. GMR stands for Gandhi Mallikarjun Rao. I know this because he's a Telugu, and I have um, I usually keep a track of all these guys. Gandhi Mallikarjun Rao, GMR. Okay. Like there is GBK group, Bangalore Airport, Mumbai Airport, and all that. Gold Party, Venkat Krishna Reddy, like this is GBK, GMR, Gandhi Mallikarjun Rao. Airports, roads, you know, bridges, all that stuff they build. So, which of the following nations launched the construction of an international center for trade and economic cooperation, corporation, sorry, cooperation, named Central Asia on the borders of the two countries recently? Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. I didn't keep a map here. I don't know why I didn't keep a map. But anyway, I think we are quite familiar with this part of the world. We have had this uh, discussion multiple times. But just to repeat and uh, so that you revise better. Uzbekistan. Please write Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. The capital is Tashkent. Where India's second Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri ji passed away in January 1966. Tashkent, okay, and uh, the president is Shavkat Mirziyoyev. The currency is Som. Currency is Som. Hmm. When a 
Russian or the Central Asian names ends in V. Remember, it's pronounced with an F. It's pronounced with an F. So Mirzi Yoyev. Mirzi Yoyev. Next, Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan's capital is Nur Sultan. Nur Sultan. <coughs> the president is Kasim Jamaat Tokayev. Kasim Jamaat Tokayev. And the currency is Tenge. Francis Tenge. Hmm. Should we learn about the rest? Maybe Turkmenistan, all these questions, all these things we have discussed in the past. But chalo, ek baar repeat kar lete hain. Uh, Ukraine, you could write this. Let me clear this first. Ukraine, Kiev, that's the capital. Volodymyr Zelensky. Volodymyr Zelensky is the Volodymyr Zelensky is the president. Is the president Volodymyr Zelensky and uh, currency is H R Y V N I A. Renuvia. Hmm? Next, Russia, you know this, but I'll give the name of the Prime Minister, Mikhail, the capital as you know is Moscow, Mikhail Mishushkin, Mishushkin, and the currency is Ruble, currency is Ruble, okay, next, Should we discuss Kyrgyzstan? Chalo, let's clear this for me. The last two, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Kyrgyzstan. Bishkek. Bishkek. Um, the president is Sadir Jarapov. Sadir Zarapov. Ah, yeah, right, right. Don't worry, I am giving you the right information. Sometimes I know I get a little. Mm -hmm. Thinking too much is, has its problems. Tajikistan. The capital is Dushanbe. Dushanbe. Um, Imam Ali Rahman. Imam Ali Rahman. is a president and the currency is Somoni Somoni Turkmenistan I think I already discussed Ashkabad the president's name is Gurbanguli Berdi Muhammadov let's not repeat yeah check there for which of the following maxims did India central drug regulator DG, D, uh, I think uh, see I I already discussed Israel and Russia, so we will not go there. Um, for which of the following vaccines did India's uh, central drug research uh, regulator, the Directorate, uh, Directorate of uh, Directorate of Control, Directorate of Control of Drugs? Okay, DGCA it should be. It should. <laughs> okay, there is an error, I think. Um, Director General and Controller of Drug uh, or Drug Controller basically um, approved for m emergency use authorization for COVID. Mm, all of them actually. Emergency use, there has been Sputnik V only. It's not 5. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is not Sputnik 5. It is Sputnik V. V is uh, what we say, V is. Um, uh, vaccine V is vaccine it is not nothing to do with um, what we say uh, you know that you know uh, the Roman numeral it is V for letter basically okay 
So, um, Sputnik. Okay, I think in one of those sessions I had mentioned that I would discuss. Um, uh, I would discuss um, one vaccine per class. I think in the last session we didn't discuss, but let me bring it back. Sputnik has been developed by, and it's the name of the first R Russian artificial satellite. Okay, Sputnik was the first ever Russian, in fact, first ever artificial satellite. I think it was 1957, and it has been developed by a Russian institute called Gamaleya. Okay, Gamaleya um, Research Institute. of epidemiology epidemiology and microbiology microbiology uh, so that's how it works okay um See, we have this massive, uh, what we say, you know, second wave happening around the country and unfortunately, see, people are not being careful. People are not being careful. People should be careful. People don't wear masks. People are not being careful because uh, they believe they are immune to such things and because they have had, let's say someone has had COVID in the past, like I have had COVID in the past, um, doesn't mean that I wouldn't get it. Please know that. That is something where reinfection is a normal happening. Very normal happening. Okay. There is chief minister I think, of a southern state, I will not name it, who has had COVID in the past and has been reinfected. So I think somewhere down the line, all of us should be a lot more careful about these things, my friends. Okay. We should be very, very careful about these things. So please correct it. It is BGCA. Okay, next. Which city or which cities will host the 2021 Davis Cup final, the premier international team event in men's tennis? Well, all three of them. Um, 2020 Davis Cup was to happen, but it didn't happen because of COVID pandemic. I think it has been postponed to this year. Now it's going to be called 2021 Davis Cup men's, sorry, Davis Cup uh, final. Okay, so this is going to be held in three cities, uh, Innsbruck in Australia, Turin in Italy and Madrid in Spain. Turin in Italy is the same town where Fiat company was started. In past, Turin was called Torino, T-O-R-I-N-O. Now it's called Turin. Okay, now it's called Turin. That's about it. So, who has, who is the defending champion in Davis Cup? You could write, 2019 defending champion. 2019 Davis Cup defending champion. Defending champion. Spain, ah, Spain. In one, you can write one more thing. Davis Cup maximum titles, maximum titles. Davis Cup maximum titles, maximum titles. What's uh, the country? United States. Thirty-two titles. Thirty-two titles. Okay. So next. Which state government would launch a mass vaccination campaign, a vaccination drive to call crushing the curve to contain the spread of COVID? Kerala. Yeah. See, Tamil Nadu is mentioned there, but you know, uh, I just today's news I found that um, this is happening one day before your class, this procession. So I found one particular um, you know, um, thing about this COVID thing that vaccination while we could be running short on vaccines the government of India has said that Tamil Nadu has wasted something like uh, you know something like 20% uh, of vaccines they have wasted 20% of vaccines Telangana has wasted 7.55% so you know they have not stored them properly vaccines have gone bad they have been misplaced and all that stuff so on one side there is a shortage because there are some people who need them aren't getting them on the other side there is mismanagement and incompetency oh yeah we got it here uh, an international team of archaeologists has recently uncovered um, a 3300 year old city known as the rice of Aten in the southern province of Lakshar which is in Egypt Egypt as you know is home to the you know the pharaohs the, you know 
um, multiple dynasties in ancient Egypt had run affairs in large parts of that world. So this particular city was, you know, was built during the reign of, you could write, during the reign means rule of King Amentok. I think Amenhotep, yeah. The third. Amenhotep, the third. In some places you will find an O here, which is okay if you don't write because it's pronounced that way. Amenhotep. The third, who is said to have ruled in the 14th century BC, 14th century BC before Christ. So 1400 years before the birth of Jesus, this guy had ruled the large parts of the world. Now look at this, after digging this area for about 125 years, 150 years, they finally found something like this, a complete city, my friends. So you can see that in the distance, you find a normal village and here you found this now. I mean what's hidden below our feet we never know yeah so egypt i can tell you a little about egypt uh, the rest of the countries are not very important right now we discussed uh, turkey in the past maybe we can discuss these two countries belarus and egypt egypt's capital is cairo or cairo uh, and the president is abdel fateh el sisi Abdel Fateh Al Sisi and the currency is Egyptian pound. Egyptian pound. Okay. And uh, if you look at Belarus, uh, Belarus, uh, the capital is Minsk. The capital is Minsk and um, the president is Alexander Lukashenko. This guy is a badmash, is a dictator. Alexander Lukashenko and the currency is ruble, the Belarusian ruble it's called. Okay. Yeah. Which is said to become the world's first country to bring in a law that would require banks, insurance and investment managers to report the impact of climate change on their businesses. Now these are all service sector things. Manufacturing companies have been told in the past to you know to calculate the impact of their activities on environment on climate but now even service companies have been asked to do that by New Zealand. By New Zealand. Because New Zealand wants to be a carbon neutral country by 2050. That's their target. Carbon neutral country by 2015. New Zealand's Prime Minister, we'll just focus on Prime Minister, is Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda Ardern and if I'm not wrong New Zealand was the first country just come to my mind now um, New Zealand was the first country to give women right to vote women right to vote to give women the right to vote this was my childhood quiz question 1893 1893 I could be incorrect but I think I'm right <laughs> Shall we look at Australia? We know Finland, uh, Sweden. Okay, we'll do one thing. We'll just look at um, Finland. Finland's capital is uh, Finland's capital is um, Helsinki, and the prime minister is Sanna Marin. Sanna Marin, youngest female head of the state in the world. Youngest female serving head of the state youngest female serving head of state she's 34 something okay next on which company did the regulators in china impose a mammoth 2.75 billion dollar fine for abusing its dominant market position for several years alibaba Ali Baba, it's not Ali Baba, it's Ali Baba, Ali, Ali. This was started by a man called, there are a couple of guys, but let's write Jack Ma. Jack Ma uh, is a guy who started Ali Baba. When he went to the US, he wanted to start an e-commerce company that would have an easy to recall name. Okay, so... Uh, you know, he asked some waiters in a, in a restaurant, he asked a waiter, so when I read this story, something basically, who comes to your mind? She says, Alibaba. Um, 
that's how you know he went around asking people what comes to your mind when we read the story you know um, the patka story they all said ali baba so that's how he named it ali baba and he later said that he even registered the name ali mama ali mama baba father mama mother ali mama if someone wanted to marry us so anyway uh, we are discussing um, ali baba and uh, you should know that ali baba's um, headquartered in hangzhou it's one of the world's mass biggest companies okay hangzhou in china current ceo he is a co-founder okay current ceo is daniel chang daniel chang hmm i'm not going to discuss the rest of the companies except that uh, you know he was asked to be the company was asked to pay after jack ma criticized the chinese government uh, especially the financial regulator that they do not know the latest methods in the world in finance, the world of finance and they're still stuck in the past he criticized certain regulations the ministry of finance government of china had imposed and this he did in front of the finance ministry officials and they didn't take it wisely and later the president of china ensured that alibaba's ipo and alibaba has a subsidiary called ant financial ant ant financial it had to it was coming out with a 38 billion dollar ipo something and it was scrapped and it is believed that the person who was behind the scrapping was the chinese president himself he doesn't like criticism so and it is also true that jack ma disappeared for about two and a half months no one knew about his particulars i mean where was he no one knew had a clue it's kind of punishment you you can't get away with criticizing the government of china even if you are billionaire that was a message see if you look at 10 cent 10 cent is a billionaire you know owned by billionaires and this company owns one major app called wechat what is that wechat yeah all these like our whatsapp there's wechat they don't there is no whatsapp in china there is no google there is no facebook there is no um twitter in china okay so which company has backed the indian society for training and development award in learning and development for innovative training practices for 2018 and 19 okay so the answer of course uh, is on the screen for you and um, who are the ceos this is ntpc is gurdeep singh gurdeep singh ntpc gurdeep singh ONGC doesn't have a full time chairman but Subhash you know interim chair uh, chairman is Subhash Kumar you could write this so sorry Subhash Kumar mm-hmm. and uh, Sail Soma Mondal Steel Authority of India Limited Soma Mondal Bhel Bharat Heavy Electronics Limited, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Sorry, Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited. Nalin Singhal. Nalin Singhal. Nalin Singhal. Okay. IOCL Indian Oil Corporation is Shrikant Madhav Vaidya. I'm so sorry. Shrikant Madhav Vaidya Shrikant Madhav Vaidya Hmm Next SEBI has recently granted the go ahead to small lenders Surya Dai Small Finance Bank to float its initial public offering it's already over Surya Dai Small Finance Bank is headquartered in Navi Mumbai I think the IPO is over it's headquartered in Navi Mumbai and its chairperson you could write it CEO is Bhaskar Babu Bhaskar Babu Ramachandran Bhaskar Babu Ramachandran 
Hmm. And there is nothing to discuss here. M1 is considered the most liquid form of money supply. What does the term liquid mean? You know the answer. There is nothing to discuss here also. Ability to convert an asset into money quickly. Just like that. Gold is considered the best liquid asset after cash. Okay. Huh. What percentage of stake was recently sold by IDBI Bank in its joint in its life insurance venture, IDBI Federal Life Insurance Company Limited to its foreign partner? AGS Life, sorry, AGS Insurance International. Twenty-three percent. You you could write this. Um, now it's called AGS. You write this AGS Federal. AGS Federal Life Insurance Company. AGS Federal Life Insurance Company. Dash JV between. Joint venture between IDBI Bank, comma Federal Bank, Federal Bank, and and AGS Insurance of. Belgium, AGS Insurance of Belgium. It's a Belgian com Belgian company, hmm? headquartered in Brussels, the capital of Belgium. Okay. IDBI had had a forty-eight percent stake in this. They sold twenty-five percent, and now they have no. They sold twenty-three percent. Now they have twenty-five percent. Okay, they still have twenty-five percent stake in this. And who is the CEO of this company? You could write this also. The CEO of AGS Federal Life Insurance Company is Vignesh Sahani. Sahani. Vignesh Shahani. The combined market capitalization of all listed companies in India has crossed the country's GDP for the first time in more than ten years. The market capitalization of the Bombay Stock Exchange reached a dash in 7.7 trillion dollars uh, rupees uh, in January 2021 against India's nominal GDP of around 190. You know, um, trillion. What we say? Uh, so from 197 um, is India's the combined market cap of all companies in the Bombay Stock Exchange, but the GDP is 190 trillion dollars. Okay. So now, what is market capitalization? That is more important. Please write market capitalization, also called M cap, equals number of issued shares, and some people call it. Outstanding shares, don't worry. Multiplied by market price of each share, market price of each share. Okay, market capitalization equals number of issued shares multiplied by market price of each share. Suppose a company has issued one lakh shares. And the market price of each share is fifty rupees. What is the market cap? Fifty lakh rupees. So this is the market value of the company's capital. That's why it's called market capitalization. Okay. And the biggest company in India by virtue of market capitalization is Reliance Industries. Reliance Industries. Second is Tata Consultancy Services, and the third is HDFC Bank. So this is these things go up and down depending on the prices of different shares and everything. So we will not we should not give a lot of importance to these things. Okay. Which of the following statements about the International Development Association funding to poor countries are is are true? Okay. Um, look at this. Um, you know. Um, International, you write this. International Development Association. All statements are true, but first write International Development Association. Underline that first part. Established 
1916 established 1916 second point head office head office washington dc washington comma dc district of columbia washington dc washington dc next uh, chief executive ceo chief executive kristalina georgieva kristalina georgieva in brackets in brackets bulgaria she is from bulgaria semicolon put a semicolon md and ceo of international monetary fund md and ceo of international monetary fund last point the ida is part of the ida is part of part of the world bank group the world bank group world bank group so it's like you know it's a part of the world bank group but its ceo is the chief of imf okay uh what it does is lends money almost free of interest i mean Poor, but the world's poorest 75 countries seven, mentioned here is 74. Typically, it is 75. Okay, 75 countries which whose per capita GNI is less than 1185 dollars. Okay, those guys are eligible. That, that those countries are eligible for loans that are interest free. Basically. Okay, so that it does not place burden on those poor countries. They can use this money to. You know, to to fund developmental activities like education, healthcare, infrastructure, stuff like that. Okay. The Reserve Bank of India has constituted a working group under the chairmanship of Jay Kumar Dash to study and recommend on digital lending, including lending through online platforms and apps. Now, who is Jay Kumar Dash? You could write this. Um, write his name, Dash. Executive Director of RBI. Executive Director of RBI. Executive Director of RBI. Reserve Bank of India. Next. Hmm. Uh, last point. Next point. The committee. The committee. The committee will study recommendations, will study and recommend, study and recommend the orderly, the orderly growth, orderly growth of digital lending, of digital lending, orderly growth of digital lending, full stop. Or otherwise, put a comma. Remove the full stop. Put a comma. Turn that into a comma. Comma, which has, which has potential, which has potential to improve, which has potential to improve access. A double C E double S access. A double C E double S, which has potential to improve access to financial products to financial products and services financial products and services financial products and services see lending is a very important business it's a hugely profitable business but of late what has happened is a lot of these uh, crooks have started uh, um, chores but marshmallows they have started these apps and are lending money you know 
at exorbitant rates of interest and people in this desperate times are in need of money they some some are not eligible for borrowing from for loans from banks and all that they have credit history score so what they do what these apps are doing is they they are charging they are lending but a very high rate of interest and if people don't pay then they call up these lending apps they they call up the relatives because they have all the data okay they call up relatives and bad mouth these guys and i'm not kidding it is not something that's not happening it's happening that's why the rbi had to come up with this particular committee to make certain recommendations okay because see the digital lending is very important because going to the banks and everything is bad these days but it has to be you know it has to it is has to be prudent both it has to be good both for the borrower and the lender oh nice according to the united you got according to the iucn world heritage outlook the great barrier reef is accessed as is assessed as having a critical outlook for the first time in which country is this great barrier reef you can see that it's australia hmm you see this is this is normal samudra okay and you see this is all reef what is a reef actually you could write this um, great barrier reef dash 2300 km spread over 2300 square kilometers spread over 2300 square kilometers 2300 square kilometers dash largest largest coral c o r a l coral reef system in the world largest coral reef system in the world dash reefs are made from reefs are made by are made by reefs are made by made by tiny organisms called coral polyps they are all organisms coral polyps okay and it is said to be the only natural object that is visible from space i mean it's created but not it's not a man made object it's natural is considered to be one of the seven natural wonders of the world human activity is destroying everything my friends oh that's shit my friends thanks for being here have a lot of fun maybe in the next session as i mentioned i'll discuss iranian nuclear crisis thanks for being here have a lot of fun stay curious stay safe